Hey, what's up, guys? You're now listening to Devo with Uncle Theo. Today is day 30, and we're going to cover Exodus chapters 37 through 40 through the end of the chapter. We'll cover four chapters today, and you know why. I've been pressing the issue all throughout Exodus. It's basically deja vu all over again. So we will be reviewing the exact same chapters that we talked about before because the same furnishings that were in the tabernacle are being mentioned again in Exodus 35 through 40. And we already covered them in Exodus 25 through 31. But repetition is the mother of all learning. So let's remember what we have. We have in the Holy of Holies, the Ark of the Covenant. Then we have a curtain. And outside of that, we have the holy place. There we have the altar of incense, the table of bread of presence, and the gold lampstand. Then we have a curtain. And this opens us up to the courtyard. And in the courtyard, we have the bronze laver and the altar of burnt offering. And there are curtains that enclose this whole thing. And we said they were 150 feet by 75 feet. And I use the basketball court for scale. So a basketball court is 96 feet by 50 feet. So that's 50 plus feet longer and 25 plus feet wider. And can you imagine the people carrying this with them in the wilderness? Now, when you think about millions of people, obviously this could be accomplished. You have the manpower to do it. But with people comes sin. So can you imagine managing that many sinners in the wilderness? Moses had his work cut out for him. And also something that I didn't state is that the curtains were to be high above seven feet high. Why is that? So you couldn't look in and see. You couldn't look in and see the business that was being handled in the tent of meetings. And guys, we've come a long way. We've learned a lot so far. And it's my goal to help the storyline of the Bible to come together. This is what we have so far. We have God starting off saying, in the beginning, he created. The world is not cyclical. God created the earth from the beginning. We have man and woman being created. We have the fall. We have the first gospel statement in Genesis 3.15. And we have man rebelling against God. And it looks like they're winning, even to the point where God has to flood the earth. Again, it finds its culmination at the Tower of Babel. And God turns that on his head and says, I'll bring about salvation through this one man who comes from Babel himself named Abram. And through a mixture of God using sinners, God turning evil to good, God teaching his people faith, God birthing a nation through, you remember what? A baby making contest, <laughs> a baby war. All of the individuals who form the 12 tribes of Israel flow from that. And then they go into Egypt at 70 and they come out two to three million. And now God is teaching them how to dwell with him. He taught them their purpose. Then he taught them their language, which was the law. Now he's teaching them how to have his presence. And that's where we are now. And this is going to set us up well for Leviticus. And so remember, remember, if you get this, if you're ever reading through Exodus again, try to lump your readings together for chapters 25 through 31 and 35 through 40. That'll help you a lot. That'll help you crack the Exodus code. So you can walk into Leviticus well, and I want to try to aid you as best as I can to help you through Exodus. Say it with me. We will not crash and burn in Exodus again. Let's look at chapter 40. The tabernacle is erected. So chapter 40, we get a shift from Bezalel and Aholiab to Moses. Look at verse 1. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, on the first day of the first month, you shall set up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. Look at verse three. And you 
she'll place the arc of the testimonies there. You see the shift of the language? Look at what's happened. The people have built from the inside out. Now, Moses, you place the arc of the testimonies there. You screen the ark with the veil. You bring the table and arrange what belongs to it. And you shall bring the lampstand and mount its lamps. Moreover, you shall set the gold altar of incense before the ark of the testimony and set the veil of the doorway of the tabernacle. You shall set the altar of burnt offering. You see what he's doing? Verse seven, you shall set the laver and put the water in it. Verse eight, you shall set the court all around and hang up the veil. Verse nine, you, 10, you. Now 12, you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the doorway of the tent of meeting and wash them with water. And you shall put the holy garments on Aaron. And look at verse 16. Thus Moses did according to all that the Lord had commanded him, so he did. And because of Moses' obedience, verse 34, it says, Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. But this is key. We got to get this in verse 35. Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle throughout all their journeys. Wherever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the sons of Israel would set out. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not set out until the day that it was taken up. For throughout all their journeys, the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day and the fire in it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel. Look at what happens here. Moses, just like the builders, have to build from the inside out. And then when the glory of the Lord comes, when God's presence come, look at what God teaches the people. Now even Moses cannot stand at the tent of the meeting. And we have to ask ourselves, why? Why is nobody able to minister? This is so beautiful. God is setting up for the next book. Nobody can enter because nobody is holy. And now we get the theme of Leviticus, holiness. I have to teach you all how to be holy. We've walked through Exodus. You failed me one time. My anger burned against you. I've told you all how to dwell with me. Now I have to continue teaching you all how to dwell with me. Not even Moses could stand to minister. So this teaches us God is saying even Moses at his best is not good enough, which is why we need not only a better priest, we need a better Moses. And can you imagine the people moving further and further and further away from the presence of God? That is communicating something. That's communicating that they're not holy. And this leads us to Hebrews 9.24. For Christ did not enter a holy place made with hands, a mere copy of the true one, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor was it that he would offer himself often as the high priest entered the holy place year by year with blood that is not his own. Otherwise, he would have needed to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the consummation of the ages, he has been manifested to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And inasmuch as it is appointed for men to die once, and after that comes judgment, so Christ also, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time for salvation without reference to sin to those who eagerly await for him. And this is what we have. This is why Moses couldn't enter the tabernacle, which is a copy of heaven meeting earth. But Christ didn't have to deal with a mere copy. He suffered the wrath of God at Gagatha. He died. He rose again and he presented himself to the Father. 
which is why we must not just talk about the death, the burial, and the resurrection. We forget a very important part. He had to present himself to God. The ascension of Christ is a very important doctrine that we cannot miss because in that presentation, he offers his blood. He offers atonement. Remember, mercy seat. He can now mercy us. And now he has sat down at the right hand of the father because his work is complete. Now we can truly enter rest. So beloved, as you work hard, as you live a holy life, work from a position of rest because Christ has made that available to you. You all have a good day and I'll catch you next time on day 31 where we covered Leviticus 1 through 3.